Hello and welcome to this exploring session and today we are looking at uh, the goodly interlude of Fulgence, senator of Rome, Lucrece's daughter, Gaius Flaminius and Publius Cornelius of the Disputation of Nobleness and is divided in two parts to be played at two times, compiled by Master Henry Medwall, late chaplain to the Right Reverend Father in God, John Morton, Cardinal and Archbishop of Canterbury. It is the second play by Henry Medwall that we are looking at this week. It is the complete works, the complete surviving works, we should say, of Henry Medwall. Uh, so Fulgence and Lucrece is like uh, nature that we're doing in other sessions, uh, I play from about 1490. Uh, it's uh, smack bang in sort of the, the early uh, part of uh, Henry the Seventh's reign. Uh, it is a household drama, so it is uh, an entertainment uh, uh, that John Morton's uh, uh, doing probably over, say, Christmas or something. That there'll be all sorts of different entertainments. And this play, as I say, it's divided in two parts to be played at two times. Now that might be on the same day. It might just be an interval, and you know that's when. A course of dinner is served as part of a very lengthy evening of uh, fun and games, or of course it could be split uh, over two sessions over different times, um, and uh, there, there's all sorts of questions that we could ask about that. It's uh, a fairly well-known play, it's got a relatively good uh, publishing history as far as Tudor interludes go. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting it it's going to be on the tip of the tongue uh, of every uh, viewer at home, but uh, you should be able to find a uh, uh, Various copies are available uh, in uh, collected editions uh, that have been published over the last, uh, you know, uh, years. Uh, you know, they, they keep popping up, so uh, you probably have a reasonably good chance of finding a copy uh, from a bookshop as well as uh, from online. Uh, it is a play with seven characters, but over the week we are going to truncate it down and we're going to do a bit of doubling and I'm going to read some text. Uh, to uh, today, starting for the first third of the text with three of us, and the three of us today reading the character of A, as well as Cornelius and Lucrece is. Liza Graham, singer, actor, and general text bod in London. And reading the part of B, as well as Ancilia and Gaius is. Hi, I'm Eric, and I just realized why, where I've heard the name Lucrece before, but I'm not going to mention it. Yeah, the, the, the other Lucreces are available. Um, and I am your host, Robert Crichton. I am going to be reading Fulgence, um, who has a massive speech, which I've just noticed. Oh, well, never mind. Um, so, uh, I just take a moment. Im imagine that we are in a great banqueting hall, maybe at Lambeth Palace. There are tables arranged, food, people crowded in hugger mugger. Um, there is, have been all sorts of fun and games has been going on. And then in the midst of it all, some person who might still already be in the room, who's just dressed, who's just a servant, suddenly some random servant starts saying some words. Ah, for God's will, what mean you, sirs, to stand so still? Have you not eaten and your fill and paid no thing therefore? <laughs> it wist, sirs, thus dare I say. He that shall for the shot pay vouchsafeth that ye largely assay such meat as he have, as he hath in store. I trow your dishes be not bare, nor yet do ye the wine spare. Therefore be merry as ye fare, ye are welcome each one into this house without feigning. But I marvel much of one thing, that after this merry drinking and good recreation, there is no words among this press, nun sunt loquele neque sermones, but as it were, men in sadness. Here you stand musing. <laughs> what about I ca cannot tell, or else some pretty damosel for to dance and spring. Tell me what you call it. Is it not so? I am sure here shall be somewhat ado, and it wis I will know it, or I go without I be driven hence. And here enter B, some other random bloke. Nay, nay, hardly, man, I undertake no man will such masteries make, and it were but for the manner's sake. Thou mayest tarry by license among other men and see the play. I warrant no man 
no man will say thee nay. I think it well, even as ye say, that no man will me grieve. But I pray you, tell me that again. Shall here be a play? Yea, for certain. Ah, by my truth, thereof I am glad and fain. And you will me believe, of all the world I love such sport. It doth me so much pleasure and comfort, and that causeth me ever to resort where such thing is to do. I trow, your own self be one of them that shall play? Uh, nay, I am none. I trow thou speakest in derision to like me there too. Nay, I mock not, wot ye well, uh, for I thought verily by your apparel that you had been a player. Uh, nay, never dull. Ah, then I cry you mercy. I was to blame. Lo, therefore, I say there is so much nice array amongst these gallants nowadays that a man shall not light lightly know a player from another man. Ah, but now, to the purpose where I began, I see well here shall be a play then. Yea, there shall, that there shall doubtless, and I trow ye shall like it well. It seemeth then that ye can tell somewhat of the matter? Yea, I am of counsel, one told me all the process. And I pray you, what shall it be? By my faith, as it was told me more than once or twice, as fair as I can bear it away, all the substance of the play shall proceed this wise. When the empire of Rome was in such flower that all the world was subject to the same, then there was a noble senator, and as I remember, Faldens was his name, which had a daughter of noble fame. And yet, as the author saith in very deed, her noble virtue did her fame exceed. Albeit there was no one almost throughout the city, young, nay old, that of her beauty did not boast. And over that her virtues manifold in such manner wise were praised and told that it was thought she lacked no thing to a noble woman that was according. Great labor was made her favor to attain in the way of marriage, and among all that made such labor were especially twain, which more than other did busily on her call, on the which twain she set her mind especial, so that she utterly determined in her heart the one of them to have, all others set apart. One of them was called Publius Cornelius, born of noble blood, it is no name. That other one was Gaius Flaminius, born of a poor stock, as men doth say. But for all that, many a fair day, through thorough his wisdom and virtuous behavior, he ruled the common weal to his great honor. And how so be it that the vulgar opinion hath both had both these men in like favor and reverence, supposing they had been of like condition? Yet this said woman of inestimable prudence saw that there was some manner of difference for which for the which her answer she differed and spared, till both her, their conditions were openly declared, and yet to them his both this comfort she gave, he that could f be found more noble of them twain, in all godly manner her heart should he have. Of the which answer they both were glad and fain. For either of them trusted uh, here, thereby to attain the effect of his desire. Yet when they had due, one of them must needs his appetite forego. Hereupon was raised a great doubt and question. Every man, after, all after, as he was affectionate unto the parties, said his opinion. But at the last, in issuing of debate, this matter was brought before the Senate. They to their give therein an utter sentence. Which of these two men should have the preeminence? And finally they gave sentence and the word that Gaius Flaminius was to be commended for the mere more noble man, having no regard to his low birth, of the which he did descend, but only to his virtue that there did therein attend, which was so great that of convenience all the city of Rome did him honor and reverence. And shall this be the process of the play? Yea, so I understand be credible information. By my faith, but if it be even as ye say, I will advise them to change that conclusion. What, will they affirm that a churl's son should be more noble than a gentleman born? Nay, beware, for men will have thereof great scorn. It may not be spoken in no manner of case. 
Yes, such considerations may be laid that every reasonable man in this place will hold them, him right therein right well paid. The manner the matter may be so well conveyed. Let them convey and carry clean then, or else he will repent that this play began. Howbeit the matter toucheth me never a deal, for I am neither of virtue excellent nor of gentle blood, this I know well. Uh, but then I speak it only for this intent, I would not that any man should be shent. And yet there can no man blame us two, for why in this matter we have not to do. We? Oh God, what? No, nothing at all, save that we come to see this play as far as we may by the leave of the marshal. I love to behold such mirth so alway, for I have seen before this day of such manner things in many a good place, both good examples and right honest solace. This play in likewise, I am sure, is made for the same intent and purpose, to do every man both mirth and pleasure. Wherefore, I cannot think or suppose that they will any word therein disclose. But such as stand with truth and reason, in godly manner, according to the season. Yea, but truth may not be said alway, for sometimes it causeth grudge and despite. Yea, doth the world so nowadays that a man must say the crow is white? Yea, that he must be God Almighty. He must both lie and flatter now and then that casteth him to dwell among worldly men. In some courts, such men shall most win. Yea, but as for the parish where I abide, such flattery is abhorred as deadly sin. And specially liars be set aside, as soon as they may with the fault be spied. For every man that favoreth and loveth virtue will such manner of folk utterly eschew, which these, wherefore I think these folk will not spare. After plain truth this matter to proceed, as the story saith, why should they care? I trow now, I, I trow here is no man of the kin or speed of either party. For why they were born in the city of Rome, as I said before. Therefore, leave all this doubtful question, and praise at the parting even as ye find. Yes, be ye sure. When they have all done, I will not spare to show you my mind. A praise who will or dispraise, I shall not be behind. I will jest thereon whatsoever shall befall, if I can find any man to jest withal. Peace, no more words, for now they come, the players are even being here at hand. Oh, so they be, so help me God and Halidom. I, I pray you tell me where I shall stand. Mary, stand even here by me, I warned. Give room there, sirs, for God of vow, they would come in if they, if my, if they might for you. Uh, yea, but I pray thee, what call it? Tell me this. Uh, who is he that now cometh in? Mary, it is Fulgens the senator. Yea, is. What, the father of the foresaid virgin? Yea, forsooth he shall this matter begin. And where is fair daughter Lucrece? She cometh unknown, I say, hold thy peace. Don't you just hate it when people just insist on asking questions rather than just letting the story happen? Um, you know, just going, <laughs> who's that? Who's that coming in? <laughs> What's going on now? Uh, who, who's that? Um... Well, it shows they're the engaged. Film. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's it's it is a a, a very well known opening. Um, and it's a very well known double act. Um, and I don't think, in a sense, there's much much to say beyond the obvious. You know, in a sense that it, uh, B fitting in basically the prologue within some other stuff going on. You know, explaining the matter of the play, um, doing all the stuff that prologues do. But amidst this sort of nice back and forth, you know, uh, oh, I took you to be a player because you're so, you know, oh, you can't tell who people are because of what they're wearing these days, can you? Um, Everyone dresses like actors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so badly that, wait, no. Uh... <laughs> um, you know, flamboyant, you, flamboyant. You, you've, flamboyant. You've seen some famous person wearing this on Instagram. You just had to steal it. Um, it's very much the theme of this week. <laughs> <Pretty much>. uh, <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> getting a lot of that in uh, nature as well. Um, it's interesting. There's there's just a little bit of gentle poking that feels a bit political as well about you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, should you tell people the truth? Well, you're not going to get anywhere in this world if you do, if you don't do a bit of flattery and a bit of few white lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and 
oh, we're, we're saying that a common man is more noble than a gentleman born. And uh, are you sure you can say that? You can't say that, can you? <laughs> but then you're going to call the crow white? I mean, uh, you know, there's albinism, but, you know, no, you're not going to, like, make that the thing. <laughs> it's... It's true. It's true. But you have to. You have to say things are what they are not if you want to get anywhere in this world. Mm. Got a little, little, little bit of uh, uh, cheating is expected. Um... Mm. So, so do people use? Um, do we have documented use of, as it were, audience plants, like explicitly audience plants before this? I don't know if there are any before this. I think this is why this is so talked about. Is that because this is? Um, we've got plenty of people coming in through the audience, uh, you know, medieval drama in the sense or coming, you know, from from uh, from amongst the crowd. I don't know that there's there's anyone that's explicitly, um, you know, just pretending to be someone milling in the hall. Um, there's the, the stage directions of the Quem Queritas play are the only ones I can think of where uh, one of the monks who's singing one of the characters is explicitly directed at, to come in as though he had come to do something else mm. um, but but that doesn't mean to say that a that there isn't more stuff out there that does that or that there's stuff that we just don't have because we don't have so much stuff yeah, um, yeah I can't think of another example of an actor specifically denying that they're an actor yeah and say so when are the actors coming on uh, oh they're coming on now and so well they've been on for five minutes uh, Budum Ching um, yeah, or, I'm like, are you one of the players? No, yeah. and I'm not a player either. So, <laughs> um, so... it's a good game. Mm, it, it's a good it, game, and, and, and I mean, it doesn't feel game. out of place with stuff that's gone earlier. It's just we've not had anything as self-consciously meta as this. Yeah, <laughs> and then they do. Uh, they very cleverly work in how that how B can herd people to stand in the right place and not block the entrance. Yeah. They yeah. would come in if they might for you. <laughs> yeah, and 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 but that sort of back and forth with audience and get out the make room um, is very common in later interludes. I mean that 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 comes up or either just a character shouting that as they come in, uh, yeah. or, uh, uh, or 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 is sort of made more 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 of a whiffling uh, but, uh, action here. But A specifically sets it up and says, "Please tell me where I shall stand." Mm. Yeah, which yeah. which is nice. Which also implies that he wouldn't have a seat. <laughs> um, Maybe yeah. the higher status characters have seats. The higher status people in the hall have seats, and everyone else yeah. is standing. Mm. Um, and the thing is, the uh, the they're still spectators, uh, or at least mm -hmm. it's inferred they're still spectators. You know, they're still watching the play as it now happens. Um, so they're still in the room. They don't exit while the yeah. stuff that is about to happen. Obviously, we are going to exit because we're all changing parts now um, <laughs> yeah. for for a while. Um, but do we yeah, have any like Rocky Horror style commentary? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing is, um, we know there's a certain amount of improvisation, maybe necessary, if only because some of the audience might be smart, Alex. Um, so before we were recording, was uh, saying that part of this household uh, was Thomas More, who was 14 around about this time, um, and there is an anecdote of him essentially sort of doing an extended heckle. Uh, during a performance where he extemporized as well as the actor on stage giving it as good as he got. Now, you read between the lines of that uh, anecdote and I'm going, oh right, he was an annoying smart ass. That uh, <laughs> is how, how we professional actors call such people. Um, sure. but... uh, because because none of us here are annoying smart asses at all. Mm. Absolutely not, but you know, in th we are professional <laughs> annoying smart <laughs> We've mm. trained long and hard to be this annoying. Um, so and it, it, the suggestion is that, you know, because more, more has a, a, an interest in drama throughout his life that also gets dramatised after his life, um, that, you know, he might have actually acted in some of these as well. So, um, you know, it's possible that one of you is, is, is actually Thomas More. <laughs> or not. You know. Cue, cue the X-Files, like... Soundtrack. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any additional thoughts before we move on? I like how they didn't go for like, oh yeah, so that's the ending, and like you know, sort of having done the whole summary of things. There, like you know, that he's happy with the ending. He wants to change the ending, so you don't actually know what the ending is. Mm. 
Um, yeah, it's also the way everything's flowing. You know, the characters have entered, and you know, the the the. That they've already entered before the the, the, the dialogue there uh, actually finishes, and you get to identify all the people you mentioned earlier. I mean, you've got that long prologue at the beginning, which is, you know, actually quite useful. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say it's it's <laughs> helpful to have the rules of this this entertainment laid out. Or in my mind, it is. We you may disagree. You may disagree. Well, it's definitely more engaging than the intro to nature. Um... <laughs> I may I say so. <laughs> nature. I'm, I know I'm for fighting a losing battle on that one, but uh, I thought it was beautifully written. If, no, uh, it is, but it also it's just like this is sort of like, oh yeah, this guy turns up and says, oh, are we supposed to have a play here? I mean, <laughs> whereas like you know, nature is just like launches into yeah. nature. Yeah, I I do I do love that the first thing that happens is an actor enters pretending not to be an actor, asking why there isn't a play. Yeah. Why, 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 why is this awkward pause? <laughs> Someone t they took the last course away ages sure. ago. Why, why, why are you waiting? <laughs> um... <laughs> also, why are you sitting there not smiling? You just ate really good food that you didn't have to pay for. Yeah, God. Unlike tough, actors. Tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love the point of that. You didn't have to pay for that. <laughs> Him, him and the big seat over here. They, he paid for everything. Uh, yeah. He wants is... you to have a good time. Yes. Um, build a sense of the household functioning as a unit. Uh, everybody to hug a mugger together. And actually, the thing about them making room is, is important because, you know, this, however big the room is, it will be crowded with as many people as possible. You know, um... You've used the word hugger mugger twice now. Yeah. I have to tell you that it's also attested in John Florio's Italian English Dictionary, uh, both the 1598 and the 1611 editions. That's nice. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to now speak at enormous length um, as the entrance. Uh, Fulgence, who has already entered, so if you could remain being A and B for the moment, uh, watching watching me uh, do this. Can we throw things? You can if you like. If if it hits me, I'll, I'll you know I'll I'll. I'll... I'd be amazed. <laughs> mm. Everlasting joy with honour and praise be unto our most dread Lord and Saviour, which doth us help and comfort many ways, not leaving us destitute of his aid and succour, but letting, but letteth his light shine on the rich and poor, and of his grace is ever indifferent albeit he diversely committeth his talent. To some he lendeth the sprite of prophecy, to some the plenty of tongues eloquence, to some great wisdom and worldly policy, to some literature and speculative science, to some he giveth the grace of preeminence in honour and degree, to some abundance of treasure, riches and great inheritance. Every man ought to take good heed of this distribution, for whoso doth take the larger benefit, he hath the more need, the larger recompense and thank, therefore to make. I speak these words only for mine own sake, and for none other person, for I know well that I am therein charged, as I shall you tell. When I consider and call to my remembrance the prosperous life that I have alway hitherto endured without any grievance of worldly adversity, well may I say and think that I am bound to yield and pay great praise and thanks to the High King, of whom proceedeth and groweth every good thing. And certes, if I would not boast of, uh, praise of boast the benefits that he hath done unto me, yet is it well known of least and most throughout all Rome, the imperial city, what place in the senate and honourable degree I occupy, and how I demean me in the same? All this can they tell that knoweth but my name. To speak of plenty and great abundance of worldly riches, thereunto belonging our houses of pleasure and great inheritance with rich apparel and every other thing that to a worthy man should be according, I am and ever have been in meekly good case, for the which I thank almighty God of his grace. Then have I a wife 
perfectly good condition and right conformable to mine intent in everything that is to be done. And how be it that God hath me not sent an, an heir male, which were convenient, my name to continue and it to repair, yet am I not utterly destitute of an heir, for I have a daughter in whom I delight as for the chief comfort of mine old age, and surely my said daughter Lucrece doth height, men uh, say, she is as like me in visage as though she were mine own image, for the, l for the which cause nature doth me force and betide, the more to favour and love her in my mind. But yet, of the principal and greatest occasion that maketh me to love her as I do, is this, which I speak not of affection, but even as the truth moveth me thereto. Nature hath wrought in my Lucrece, so that to speak of beauty and clear understanding, I cannot think in her what should be lacking. And besides all that, yet a greater thing, which is not oft seen in so young a damsel. She is so discreet and sad in all demeaning, and thereto full of honest and virtuous counsel of her own mind, that wonder is to tell the gifts of nature and of especial grace. <laughs> Am not I greatly bound in this case to God, as I rehearsed you before? Hmm? I were too void of all reason and grace if I would not serve and praise him therefore with due love and dread. He asketh no more. As far as he will me grace there to send, the rest of my life therein will I spend, albeit that I must partly intend to the promotion of my daughter Lucrece to some meetly marriage, else God defend. She is my chief jewel and riches, my comfort against all care and heaviness, and also she is now of good and ripe age to be a man's fear by way of marriage. Wherefore, if I might see ere I die that she were bestowed somewhat according, then were my mind utterly, discharged utterly, of every great cure to me belonging. It was the chief cause of my hither coming to have a communication in this same matter with one Cornelius. Oh, came there none such here? Oh, yes, I, I am come here at the last. I have tarried long, I cry you mercy. Nay, no, no, no offence, there is no waste nor loss of time yet hardily, for this is the hour that ye and I appointed here to meet this other day. Now. Uh, show me your mind, let me hear what ye say. Then will I leave superfluity away, for why ye know already my mind in substance. I wot not whether I do yea or nay. Why, is it now out of your remembrance that my desire is to honour and advance your daughter Lucrece, if she will agree that I so poor a man her husband should be? Well, ye need not, sir, to use these words to me, for none in this city knoweth better than I of what great birth or substance ye be. My daughter Lucrece is full unworthy of birth and goods to look so high, saving that happily her good condition may her enable to such a promotion. But if this be your mind and such intent, why do ye not labour to her, therefore? For me it seemeth it were right expedient that we know therein her mind before uh, ever we should commune thereof any more. For if she would to your mind apply, no man shall be so glad thereof as I. Suppose ye that I did not so begin to get first her favour. <laughs> yes, trust me well. And uh, what comfort would she give you therein? By my faith no great comfort to tell, save that she abideth to have your counsel. For as she saith, she will no thing in such matter to do without your counselling, nor otherwise than ye shall be content. And thereupon it was my mind and desire to speak with you of her for the same intent, your good will in this behalf to require, for I am so brent in love's fire that nothing may my pain a slake without that ye will my cure undertake. Sir, I shall do you the comfort that I can, as far as she will be advised by me. Howbeit, certainly, I am not the man that will take her from her the liberty of her own choice. That may not be. 
when I speak with her, I shall her advise to love you before other in all goodly wise. I thank you, sir, with all mine heart, and I pray you do it without delay. As soon as I shall throw you depart, I will her mind therein assay, for I shall think that every hour is twain till I may speak with you again. Now, a wise fellow that had somewhat a brain, and of such things had experience, such one would I with me retain to give me counsel and assistance. For I will spare no cost or expense, nor yet refuse any labor or pain the love of fair Lucrece thereby to attain. Uh, so many good fellows as there been in this hall, and is there none, sirs, among ye all, that will enterprise this gear? Some of you can do it if ye list. But if you will not, then I must go seek a man elsewhere. And exit. Um, and we'll just pause there. Um... Yes, he's, he's, uh, I'm warming. I'm warming to uh, okay, a massive speech. But I'm warming to Fulgence. He seems a, a mostly a, a decent, you know, for his time. He seems quite liberal. Um, uh, well, you know, with 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 he 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 uh, he um, you know declares his privilege straight away, um, <laughs> and uh, you know he says you know it's all down to providence and good luck. I've 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 had all. All these good things um you know not everything i mean it's a bit awkward when he says yeah like of male heir um but uh, still love me daughter so that's 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 fine um and uh, and you know even when cornelius comes to him he he, he, d he does say well look i'm not i'm not gonna decide you know I'll, I'll put your case but you know that's it that's all i can do um so yeah, how do, how do we find find this little exchange between Cornelius Fulgence and and also that massive speech? Who wants to leap in, Eric? You you look like you want to leap in. No, I was going to say ladies first, but I mean you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but if you let me talk first, I'll just start talking, and then nobody else will be able to speak ever. So why don't you go first? <laughs> oh, okay. I, I was just going to say that, like, as far as I can tell, because we get basically a full description of, like, Lucrece. We get not necessarily what she looks like, but how she behaves, that kind of thing. And as far as I can tell, she's one of the original goths, because she is always discreet mm -hmm. and sad all the time. Uh, as far as I, and, and, unless that was a misreading, a sad and all demeaning, and um, yeah, and also what I found interesting was that he lets sort of um, Fulgence lets his daughter decide, although he is egging like for you know Cornelius. He's sort of like, yeah, I really like you because you're rich and you're respectable. I hey. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of you and your riches. Yeah. No, 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 you're not my good man, but it's all right. You know, she's quite, quite hot and everything, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, only yeah. sad note. I mean, it's, it's uh, more serious than, and than, uh, you know, going full. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, 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 yes. I thought, yeah. It could, it could, it could mean either, but it was often, especially of young women, uh, if, if they had a sad brow, it didn't mean they were necessarily unhappy. It just meant they were serious. Mm. I, I just thought it would have been funnier if she was a goth or emo. I yeah. well, well, we have... well, we can picture her that way. You know, we can picture her with, with the, you know, multiple ear piercings and the oh, yeah. big chunky <laughs> necklace with a bat on it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Eyeliner. Yeah. Yeah. Make a T-shirt wearing "I hate old men" or something. So, I, I, just yeah, I don't know. That's well, just me. The th the thing is that we, what we've got here is the father's portrait. So you know, there's there there might be a fundamental difference to you know the the, the image she presents at home to uh, 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 you know the outside world. So there there could be some fun to be played with there. Um, other thoughts before we move on? We have a little brief inter inter interlocutor A B scene. Um, I say scene. They're they're still in the room. They've just watched this scene. So sh shall we find out what A and B think uh, about what's just happened? Maybe we should do that. Uh, so yes, A and B. Uh, Cornelius has just left. Now I've spied a meat office for me, for I will be of counsel and may may with yonder man. Peace. Let be. 
By God, that will destroy all the play! Destroy the play, Quade? No, nay, nay, the play began never till now. I will be doing, I make God a vow, <laughs> for there is not in this hundred mile a feature board board than I am one. Uh, and what shall I do in the meanwhile? Marry, thou shalt come in anon with another pageant. Who? I? Yea, by Saint, Anon Saint John. What? I never used such thing before. But follow my counsel and do no more. Look, that thou abide here still, and I shall undertake for to fo fil fulfill all his mind without in delay. And whether I do so, yea or nay, at the least, well, I dare I undertake the marriage utterly to make, mayor or to make. If he and I make any bargain, so that I must give him attendance, when thou seest me come in again, stand even still and keep thy countenance. For when Gaius Flaminius cometh in, then thou must thy pageant begin. Shall any profit grow thereby? Hold thy peace. Speak not so high, lest any man of this company know our purpose openly and break all our dance. For I assure thee faithfully, if thou quiet thee as well as I, this gear shall us both advance. Nay then, let me alone heartily. If any advantage hang thereby, I can myself thereto apply, uh, by help of good counsel. This fellow and I be masterless, and live most part in idleness. Therefore some manner of busyness would become us both well. At the least wise, it is merry being with men in time of wooing. For all that while they do no thing but dance and make revel. Sing and laugh with great shouting, fill in wine with revel routing. I trow it be a joyful thing among such folk to dwell. And uh, at this point we have the entrance of the other characters. Uh, it's, it's, it's great, there's so many fun things here of just going, Oh, I'll, I'll become his servant. You can't, it's the play. You'll ruin the play. You can't, you can't enter the play. Of course we can enter the play. You, you know, it's, it's Breaking started. the fourth it's, wall. It started after we came in, so you know we're 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 in the same room now. It's fine, and I I love the way that B goes. Shh, don't tell the audience, <laughs> and if, they might hear us. I, if if someone hasn't written a, a paper or a, an article on this whose title was not "Destroy All the Play," yeah. <laughs> they're missing a trick. I, I would be amazed if if there wasn't at least um, uh, several that do on the same theme. Whether they've uh, got that title, I don't know. Um, it's uh, it is just so delicious, isn't it? Um, you know, it just it, it, it takes a play which could be quite dry, and then mm -hmm. just gives it a little bit of spin uh, and break it up. And you know, there's um, yeah, and you know, A and B just want to have fun because they want to be in a ha fun household. They want dancing. They want wine. They want wine. Yes, wooing. Uh, men in time mm -hmm. of wooing. Uh, that's all they do is dance and make mm -hmm. happy days. <laughs> 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 okay, we that's, have. A that's why Lucrece doesn't want to marry them. She's a goth, you know. Yeah. yeah. She's a <laughs> she demands they play some Bauhaus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Bella Lugosi's dead and all that. Undead, um. undead, undead, undead. <laughs> it's so a good song. It is. Uh, it really is. <laughs> and and accurate. Um, you know, um, in that in that sense. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. we will move forward into the uh, the ensuing scene. We have the re-entrance of the 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 plot <laughs> returns. So we have the entrance of Fulgence, Lucrece, and uh, Lucrece's servant and Cilia. Um, who uh, will will yeah we can go that far and that'll be fine so uh to everyone daughter lucrece you know well enough what study and care i have for your promotion and what fatherly love i bear to you so that i think in mine opinion it were time lost and wasteful occupation this matter to rehearse or tell you any more so if ye it best know as i said before but the special cause that I speak for is touching your marriage. As ye know well, many folk there be that desireth sore and laboureth in that behalf with you to mail. 
ye know what is for you, ye need no counsels, how so be it, if you list my counsel to require, I shall be glad to satisfy therein your desire. Truth it is, father, that I am bound as much unto you as any child may be unto the father living on the ground. And where it pleaseth you to give unto me mine own free choice and my liberty, it is the thing that pleaseth me well, sith I shall have therein your counsel. And now, according to this same purpose, what think ye best for me to do? Ye know right well, as I suppose, that many folk doth me greatly woo, amongst the which there be specially two in whom, as I trow, and so do ye, the choice of this matter must finally be. In that point your mind and mine doth agree. But yet, right now, ere I come here, for Publius Cornelius ye advised me, as touching ye would have me only rest there. If that be your mind, I shall gladly forbear all other, and only to him assent to have me in wedlock at his commandment. Nay, daughter Lucrece, not so I meant, for though I did somewhat to him incline, yet for all that it is not mine intent that ye should so thereupon utterly define, uh, but look whom ye will on God's blessing and mine. For trust ye me verily, it is all one to me whether Gaius Flaminius wed you or else he. Then, sith I have so great liberty and so good choice, I were unfortunable and also too unwise if I would not see that I had him which is most honourable. Wherefore, may it like you to be agreeable that I may have respite to make inquisition, which of these two men is better of condition? Hold me content. That shall be well done. It may be respited for a day or twain, but in the meantime use this provision. See that ye indifferently then both entertain till that your mind be set at a certain uh, where ye shall rest now. Uh, can ye do so? At the least my good will shall I put thereunto. Then, sith I have business at home for to do, I will thitherward as fast as I may. Is it your pleasure that I shall with you go? Nay, I had as lever that ye went your way about this matter. Well, and go. Bye. Well, Exit. Fulgence. God be with you then. I shall do therein the best that I can. And enter, um. Uh, and. Yeah, I've got an interest. Sorry, I'm just trying she... to read this uh, stage direction. After a certain pause. After a certain. You pause for a bit. Take a moment. I will not dislander nor blame no man, but nevertheless by that I hear say, poor maidens be deceived now and again. So great dissembling now a day there is conveyed under words gay that if... Or oh, peace, lady, ye must forbear. See ye not who cometh here? Who is it, what ye hear? It is Gaius Flaminius, parde. He that would your husband be. Hey, good lord, how wist he for to find me here? And we'll just pause there briefly because uh, Ancilla, uh, Ancilla, uh, Ancilla uh, is uh, read by the same person as guys. Um, so we'll just take a moment. Uh, don't worry, she doesn't say anything else in this short scene. Um, so lots of interesting things going on there. I think we should point out, this is quite important for this scene, is that A is standing there still he was told by b stand there and try and get attached to a household so what comedy business is potentially upstaging this entire scene i mean you know the audience might not even notice this scene happening because it's potentially just basically massive upstaging from ages going <coughs> and and doing business so um yeah Dangerous scene, this. Dangerous scene. Um, I, I like the fact there's a, there's a pause. I don't know if this is the earliest pause. I, I have been hunting for the earliest pause, uh, explicitly stated. I don't know if there are any pauses in uh, earlier medieval stuff. So um, Pauses that are noted, I suppose. Yeah. Um, in, you know, explicitly, in the texts that have come down to us. Yeah. Um, explicitly stated as, she pauses. 
at this moment uh, as she thinks. Um, yeah, how are we feeling? We've met Lucrece now. How are we feeling mm. about her? She's pensive. <laughs> Likes to think things through. She she is intelligent and she knows the burden of the decision she's making. She's not one of these, um, you know, what was it? Uh, what was the name of the girl who wa- willfulness, the willful wanton? Um, oh yes. Who who just. Uh, she was so tired of living with her mother that she wanted to get married to anyone. Mm. Um, and she did. She got married to someone terrible. Uh, but Lucrece, you know, she, she knows the decision she's making. She's ready to let her father choose. She says, anyway, that she's ready to let her father choose for her. Um, but it's interesting how she words it. She doesn't say, Dad, I like Cornelius. If you approve, I'll choose him. She says, if you tell me to choose Cornelius, then I will. Uh, which kind of, to me, implies that she maybe already has a preference, mm. uh, and the preference might not be Cornelius. Mm. Um, yes, uh, and it's it's interesting. The person who brings up uh, Gaius Flaminius is 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 uh, is uh, Fulgens. Um, whether that's with intent or not uh, is is interesting. It's also interesting when they talk about this contest that they're going to have, um, you know, or the the decision. Yeah, uh, uh, to, to make um, is respited for a day or twain, and I wonder if that's a clue to how long the part between part one and part two is. That this is a promissory note for uh, a later event. Um, well, although um, maybe, I mean, it, it could equally well be that it was all written for one feast, and this is after the main course, and the next bit is after dessert. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm just just hunting for clues Ooh, on, on that front. Dessert. Um, um, oh no. <laughs> um, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And that's that's how we do it today. I mean, I I wouldn't do this except in a food based context. Um, because why would you? Um, yes. It, yeah. it, it's just so important. This is this is dress up time yeah. for audience, and you could probably pe- get them to pay twice as much as they would if we just did this in a, in a rural theatre. Um, I was going to say you could probably do this as a sort of cabaret setting with tables and stuff, mm. but I don't know, maybe that's just me. Well, that's... Yes, a- Ancilia should definitely dance on the tables. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's the thing is you could do this as a, a, a historical recreation thing and persuade the audience, you know, turn up in costume, you're going to be part of the household, there's going to be lots of authentic dishes. You, you could turn that into a really nice event that people would buy mm. into uh, quite nicely and have yeah. musicians and you you could go full full whack on this so so textually is her name ancilia or ancilla because what? ancilla of course is latin for female servant uh, i'm just checking that because i'm getting uh, um, i'm getting contradictory things while i'm looking at different i'm going to go to this edition which i think is probably the one that will give us what how it was printed um so that would probably be the better one to go for. Uh, uh, Ancilla is what I've got. Ancilla, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, the, so, I d- in that version, yes, I, d- I don't believe in the eye. Okay. Ancilla. Ancilla. Um, Servus cum Ancilla. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we've got uh, all this... Uh, you know, and it's quite nice. It's quite short. I mean, you didn't go over. You know, th- we knew this scene was coming. This scene could have happened off stage. Um, we got we got the the nub of it. We got a sense of character. And Lucrece is left on stage now. Uh, a is still there in theory. Um, as uh, as is uh, uh, Ancilla, who doesn't say anything else um, for this sequence. Uh, her time will come. Um, and uh, however, un- entering is the swiftly revoicing of himself. Uh, entering uh, Gaius Flaminius. Yes, good lady. Wheresoever ye go, he that listeth to do his diligence in such manner wise as I have do, at the last he may come to your presence. For whosoever oweth obedience unto love, he hath great need to attendance if he will speed. Sir, ye be welcome. What is your mind? Why, fair Lucrece, is that your guise so to be so strange and so unkind to him that oweth you loving service? 
I trow that I have told you twice or thrice that my desire is to marry with you. Have you not heard this matter or now? Yes, in very truth, I have heard you say at divers times that ye bear me affection. To such an intent, I say not nay. What need ye then to ask the question what I would with you at this season? Me seemeth ye should there no doubt no more, sith I sith ye know well mine errand before. I wish your strangeness grieveth me sore, but notwithstanding, now will I cease, and at this time I will try no more, lest I give you cause of great heaviness. I came hither for only for your sake, doubtless to glade you and please you in all that I can, and not for to chide you with not for to chide with you as I began. For think it in your mind, I am the man that would you please in all that I may, and to that purpose I will do what I can. Though ye forbid it and say therein nay, in that point only I will you disobey. My heart shall ye have in all godly wise, whether ye dis ye take me or utterly despise and to say that i will follow the guise of wanton lovers nowadays which doth many flattering words devise with gifts of rings and brooches gay their leaven's hearts for to betray ye must have me therein excused for it is the thing i have never used therefore i will be short and plain <laughs> sorry um, mm -hmm. and i pray you heartily fair lucrece that he will be so to me again. You know well. <laughs> I have made, sorry, I'm just laughing because it's a very long speech, um, <laughs> but it will be short. Um, <laughs> you know well. I have made labor and business, and also desired you by words express that you would vouch save in your heart to be my wife till death us part depart. Lo, here is the matter that I come for, no, to know there in your mind and pleasure, whether ye set by me any store to the effect of my said desire, or nothing else will I require, and uh, but that I may have a plain yea or nay, whereto I may trust without delay. And me think of that, by that ye say, ye force not what mine answer will be. Ah, uh, will ye make, take it that way? My lady, I meant not so parlay. The affirmative were most lief to me, for as ye yourself knoweth best, that was and is my principal request. But ye may say I am a homely guest on a gentlewoman so hastily to call. <laughs> nay, nay, sir, that guise is best. Ye cannot displease me withal. And according to your desire, I shall, even as soon as I godly may, answer ye therein without delay. How be it? It cannot be done straightway, if I might get a realm thereby. First will I my father's mind assay, where, whether he will thereunto apply. For if he like you as well as I, your mind in this behalf shall be soon eased, if my said father may be content and pleased. Gramercy, mine own sweet Lucas. Uh, of you desire can I no more at all save only that ye do your business upon your father busily to call, so that whatsoever shall befall within a few days, I may barely know to what effect this matter shall grow. Ye shall know by tomorrow night what my father will say thereunto. Then shall make ye mine heart full light, if it please you so to do. Yes, doubt you not it shall be so. And for that cause I will even now depart. Now well, now farewell then, my own sweetheart. And exit Lucrece and and Silla, etc. Um, leaving Gaius. <laughs> Sorry uh, about that. Yeah. Leaving leaving Gaius alone uh, on stage. Um, <laughs> it's it's a really sweet little scene. This actually, I've absolutely, yeah. It's you know, I uh, you know, I I I won't. I will you know. It, it's the way he says. You know, I'll I'll only disobey your, your you in one thing. Um, and that's you know if you if you if you tell me you don't love me I will always love you. Yeah, uh, I can't much. I can't stop loving you even if you tell me not to. Um, I'm, I'm and he loving... just not, he wants a yes or a no. He wants to know where he is. You know. Yes, and and she says, well, it seems by that you don't care what my answer is, and he's like, no, yeah. I care, I care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she is playing with him a bit, isn't she? And he's <laughs> like, man. no, I just bared my soul. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but you know, uh, we're all drinking deep of respect women juice, and I like how this play does that. Mm. Yeah, Com she has total to, like, control over this poor, lead. poor lad, doesn't she? And and it is the way she does basically say yes, but I still need to do this properly. Mm. Um, you know, and, you know, he can very much take that. You know, it's 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 probably you know it's fine to a point. Mm -hmm. uh, be patient. Be patient. Do this right. Don't 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 muck about. Because we'll get some stuff. We'll get stuff. <laughs> don't forget the stuff. <laughs> Ducks in a row. Yes. yes. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that, that's it's, it, the actual plot itself and the actual play itself is is engaging me. It's not just mm -hmm. the meta stuff. Um, are you still on stage, by the way? <laughs> are you still on stage? Of course. Well, he's still in the room. I mean, to be fair, he might not be massively upstaging everyone. And if he was upstaging during this scene, I would kill him. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that he's alive means that he hasn't been upstaging this scene. Yeah, yeah. I, I think definitely this bit. If he tried to upstage this bit, he'd mm. be in serious trouble. Because uh, this is a lovely scene. Um, uh, additional thoughts? Um yeah it was just that bit where he goes oh yeah i'll just be brief and it's like you know he's been talking for like 10 minutes um <laughs> well the writing is very direct it's not it's not yeah. flowery no yeah compared uh, to previous like fulgence and cornelius yeah and and the thing is the the lines they're, they're not short but they're, they're not excessively long so actually in terms of time it does that speech doesn't take that long to say you know yeah, once, yeah. once you know rehearse it and you know and, and and do stuff with it. It it isn't excessively long. It's not like that's the joke. Um, you know, he's just got stuff to say. Um, yeah. You can't you can't rush this stuff. You know, it's the heart. It's love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Shall we move forward? So uh, everyone changes places again, apart from uh, Gaius, who's uh, still on stage, but. Uh, Liza changed hats and uh, is back to being A, who's been on stage the whole time and hasn't been doubled. Um, so, A, now's your chance. Try and get employed. Uh, sir, ye seem a man of great honour, and that moveth me to be so bold. I, I read ye, adventure not over much labour upon this woman, lest ye take cold. I tell you, the matter is bought and sold. Without ye take the better heed, for all these fair words ye shall not speed. Thinkest thou so in very deed? Yea, so help me God, and I shall tell you why. Sir, right now, this way as I yeed, this gentlewoman came even by, and a fresh gallant in her company. As God would, near them I stalked, and I heard every word that they talked. But spake they any word of me? Nay, nay, ye were nothing in her thought. They were as busy as they might be about such a matter as ye have wrought. And by God that me dear bought, look what answer that ye now have, even the same words to him she gave. I wish, sir, I am but a poor knave, but yet I would take on me a great pain your honesty in this matter to save, though it be unto me no profit or gain. But therefore I speak and have disdain to see in a woman such dissemblance towards a gentleman of your substance. Why, has, hast thou of me any acquaintance? Yea, sir, and sometime ye knew me, though it be now out of your remembrance. By my faith it may well be, but nevertheless I thank thee. Me seemeth thou wouldst that all were well betwixt me and yonder fair damsel. Yea, by God, I would fight in the quarrel rather than you should lose your intent. I pray thee, fellow, where, where dost thou dwell? Uh, by, by my faith, I am now at mine own commandment. I lack a master, and that I may repent. To serve you, and please, I would be fain, if it might like you me to retain. And of one thing I will ascertain, I doubt not I shall do you better stead towards this marriage than some other twain. And if I do not, let me be dead. Well, then I will do by thy read, and in my service thou shalt be, if thou canst not, if thou canst find me any surety. 
Yes, I can have sureties plenty for my truth within this place. Here is a gentleman that would trust me for as much good as he has. Uh, yea, and that, but it, and that is but little per, per case. By my faith, go where he shall, it is as honest a man as any in the realm. I have no more acquaintance with it within this hall, if I would any friends assay. And at this point, B comes forward. I'm just going to briefly pause there because I've just realised I've, I've, uh, we've got two people talking at the same time coming up. So um, uh, shall I be Gaius for the, the remainder of the scene? Uh, and you take on B again. I apologise. I should have stuck with my original, take my original plan. Take on B. Take on B. Yeah. Okay. That kind of evening. Uh, okay, so B comes forward, um, and uh, so yes, uh, maybe we should just briefly recap what's going on here. So, um, is A being quite honest here? Is A creating a bit of a crisis where there is none so that he gets employed? Yeah, it's weird. I mean, by the rules of the play, if that scene took place, the audience should have witnessed it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Whereas we didn't witness a scene between Lucrece and Cornelius, we witnessed a scene between Cornelius and Lucrece's father. Mm. Hmm. I I think there was a clue with what A and B were talking to each other about how they um, get work. Um, yeah, I think there was something about um, you know either make or mar, and I think uh, the love. So I th I think this is a plan. This is a deliberate deception. It's just yeah. a question of how clear that is to the audience. B certainly describes themselves as a bawd. Uh, a hasn't yet. A has been more of a, a sort of golden retriever of a person. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. If told yeah. to fetch, they will fetch, and, and mm -hmm. they'll be very happy about it. Mm. Yeah, see, when, when B went off to do stuff, I, I thought that B was going to come back as Gaius, but then I, re I realized I, I misread that sort of Yes, it's uh, it's it's my bad for uh, trying to overcomplicate a, a doubling scheme, um, uh, as it were. So, so, um, uh, we so will... Gaius, Gaius says he will employ A if if A can find any surety. Presumably, that means someone to be their recommendation, their their reference, if you will. Luckily, um, there's someone to hand. Yes, there's someone right here who's going to recommend me very highly. Yes. Yes, um, so uh, B did enter, uh, at, I think there is a stage direction for the entrance of B, but I'm not quite sure where it actually was, um, precisely where that happened. I didn't read it out, I know that. Uh, so, um, oh no, maybe there isn't. Maybe there is no definite re-entry point for B. Maybe we can just infer one. Um, it's anyway. under, if I would any friends essay, and then B comes forward. Yeah, uh, but... He comes, he comes forward, points... but he's already on stage. Yes. Hmm. Uh, let us just go back a few lines so that I can bed in Gaius. Um, uh, so can we go back to, well then, will I do thy read? That uh, Just so that we get a sense of it again and get a sense that I'm now playing who Eric was a minute ago. Um, and Eric will be who Eric was playing a minute ago, but a different person he was playing earlier. Um, we're just reading it, guys. It's, it's fine. Um, well then, will I do thy read, and in my service thou shalt be, if thou canst find me any surety? Yes, I can have sureties plenty for my truth within this place. Uh, here is a gentleman that would trust me for as much good as he has. Ye, yeah, and that is but little, Percase. By my faith, go where he shall, it is as honest a man as any in the rail. I have no more acquaintance within this hall, if, if I would any friends essay. By God, here is one best of all. I trow he will not say me nay, for he hath known me many a day. Sir, will not ye for my truth undertake? Yes, for God, else I would were, I were bake. Sir, my master, will you believe me? I dare trust him for all that I can make, if ye find me sufficient surety. As for his truth, doubt not ye. I never could buy him anything a spy, but that he is was as true a man as I. He and I dwelled many a fair day in one school, and yet I wot well from thence he bare never away 
the worth of an of a half penny that I can tell. Therefore, he is able with you to dwell as for his truth. Uh, there, well, I say, heartily trust him therein ye may. Well, upon your word, I shall assay, and, sir, after thy good deserving, so shall I thy wages pay. Uh, but now, to remember one thing, methought thou saidest at the beginning that Lucrece favoured better than me another lover. Uh, what man is he? Ah, uh, Cornelius, I ween his name should be. Ah, then I know him well by the ruder. There is not within all this city a man born of a better blood. But yet Lucrece hath a wit so good that, as I think she will before see, whether his conditions thereto agree, and if they do not, fare well he. But therein I have naught ado. He shall not be dispraised for me without that I be compelled thereto. I cannot let him woo, uh, for to woo a woman being at her own liberty, for why it is as free for him as for me. I will forbear never the more till I know what shall be the end. Go thy ways unto Lucrece, therefore, and heartily me unto her recommend, a praying her that she will me send a ready answer of that thing that she promised me at her departing. Marry, I shall, without any tarrying. I know mine errand well enough. Ye shall see me appoint a meeting where she again shall speak with you. Then shall I thy wit allow, if thou can bring that about. Yes, that I shall do, have ye no doubt. And exit, Gaius. Now, by my troth, I would not have thought that thou hadst been so w half so wise, for thou hast this matter featly wrought, and conveyed it point devised, to bring thyself to such a service. I see thou, I see well thou hadst some wit in thy head. Uh, yea, a little, but hast thou sped? You, even likewise, I have now, have thou no dread, I have gotten a master for my prow. I never thrived as I shall do now. No, which way? I shall tell the how. It is no mastery to thrive at all under a man that is so liberal. There is now late unto him fall, so great goods by inheritance that he wot never what to do with all. But lasheth, his, lasheth it forth daily askance that he hath no daily remembrance of time to come, nor maketh nor, no store, for he careth not which end goth, for, goth before. And by our lady I commend him the more. Why should he those good spares to he ne labeled never therefore? And nay, and every man should care for goods and especially such as are of gentle blood, it were a great sin, for all liberality in them should begin. Now many a poor man thereby doth win the chief substance of his living. My master were worthy to be a king for all liberal expenses in all his dealing. I trow thou see, shall see him come in like a rotter, <laughs> somewhat according in all his apparel to him belonging. How much payeth he, as ye suppose, for the making of a pair of his hose? Mary, twelve pence were a fine thing. <laughs> Yea, by the road, I twenty times told that is even twenty shillings for the making. It cannot be so without a man would make them all with silk and gold. <laughs> Nay, my jeez, an unearthly thing, but even by the bare cloth and the lining, save only that only that there is in cutting a new manner of fashion nowadays, because they should be somewhat strange. They must be. They must be striped all this way with small slips of colours. Gay, a codpiece before almost thus large, and speaketh therein the greatest charge. Uh, of them he hath store and plenty, and that the fashions be new and strange, for none of them passeth the mid thigh. And yet he putteth in a gown co commonly how many broad yards as ye guess? Mary, two or three? Nay, seven and no less. By my truth, that is like a lie. But it is as true as ye stand there. And I shall tell you a reason why. All that doth that fashion were, they have wings behind ready to fly, and a sleeve that would cover all the body. Then forty places, I think, in my mind. They have their four, and there's many behind. Well, as for gentlemen, it is full kind to have their pleasures that may well pay. 
Yay, but then this grudgeth my mind. A gentleman shall not wear it, wear it a day, but every man will himself array of the same fashion even by and by on the morrow after. Nay, that I defy. But then I marvel greatly why you are not garnished after that guise. There is never a knave in the house, save I, but his gown is made in the same wise, and for because I am new come to service, I must for a while be content to wear mine still own gar- mine st- to wear still mine own garment. Uh, yea, but abide, to what intent doth thy master take in hand to make him so much costly raiment? Mary, that is easy to understand. All is done for Lucrece's sake. To wed her he doth his reckoning make. I put case that she do him forsake, so that she be my master's wife. By my faith, I, then I say it will make many a man to lose his life, for thereof will rise great a strife. Mary, I pray God send us peace. Be my faith, it, it will be no less if my master have not, have not Luc- Lucrece. I can no more. God speed the right. Lo, these folk will strive and fight for this woman's sake. When they have done their uttermost, I ween verily he shall speed best that must her forsake. He is well at ease that hath a wife, yet he is better that hath none by my life. But he that hath a good wife and will forsake her, I pray God the devil take her. Now in faith thou art made a knave, I see that well thou hast wended a shrew. The devil I have! Nay, I have married two or three by the time that sit the time that I her lost. And keepest thou them all in all still with thee? Nay, that would not quite the cost. To say the truth, they found me most. <laughs> then they have some manner getting by some occupation, have they? Sir, they have a pretty way. The chief mean of their leaving is uh, lechery leechcraft, I would say wherein they labor night and day, and ease many a man in some case. And where do they dwell? At the common place, there mayst thou them all find. God's mercy, where is my mind? By God, I shall be shent, I I should have gone to Lucrece about my master's business. Uh, Thitherward was I bent. By faith, my master is there, all the while that thou art here, as I verily suppose. I shrew thy face by St. Mary, with thy chattering thou dost be tarry even for the same purpose. I say, when thou hast with Lucrece spoken, I pray thee, wilt thou deliver a token in my name to her maid? Nay, you must beware of that gear, for I have been afore you there. Why hast thou her a say? Yea, yea, that matter is sped full. I may have her, and she will, that comfort she me gave. And hast thou none other comfort th- at all? I trust to God, then, then yet I shall all this matter save. How be it, I will not the matter begin without her, I, without I sh- were sure she were a virgin. By my troth, this comfort I will put thee in, I came never on her back in the way of sin. Then avoid the place! <laughs> Yes, uh, a, a, yeah, a I avoid... would avoid the place if I just said. Yeah, yeah um, <laughs> should we just briefly um, unpack that last line? <laughs> or, you know, all the rest of it. Yeah. Um... I mean, woo! This place <laughs> getting, a bit, uh, getting a bit PG-13 here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, are we just being modern in that thinking? Or uh, is that that exactly where where we should be well do we do we have here some historical information on medieval sex positions i mean maybe yeah um (laughs) it's 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 really difficult to read that line any other way (laughs) 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 oh boy Okay, um, there's a lot to unpack in that whole speech. I, I think um, uh, Eric will be um, getting deja vu all over again uh, yeah, with me yeah. because we've had a lot of this material already today. Um, so all of the stuff to do with clothing mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. is it's not it's not exactly word for word, but there's a lot of it is repi- uh, is used in nature as well. Yeah, especially um, the whole like sleeve uh, that can cover the body and stuff, and yeah, yeah. 
the, is the, nature uh, about the same date then yes they're they're, they're you know they're both they're both uh, 1490s yeah that sort of area they're both entertainments for the same household mm -hmm. by the same author um, is, is nature complaining ab about big cod pieces big expensive <laughs> cod pieces it, it's the character of pride is yes. uh, comes on dressed ridiculously we assume he's mm. he's obsessed with his his appearance his hair very keen on his hair uh, but he then describes a, uh, more appropriate clothing that he's going to get for mankind oh, and it's God. this ridiculous uh, ridiculous costume that he's going to get um, and of course here we're describing costuming for another character who is off stage you know it's the uh, he, my, my master is uh, too woo he's doing some peacocking I think is the term mm. Um, he's, he's getting up, getting his glad rags on um, in the latest fashions. So it seems to be a, a, a big in gag in in the household uh, mm -hmm. that this is something to mock. I, I'm, yeah. I'm loving the fashion history, honestly. That um, that that the hose uh, the hose have to have all kinds of beautiful stripy colors. Um, which of course makes them more work. It's I, it's not necessarily the fabric that's more expensive. They're not silk and gold. Uh, maybe there's some trim involved, but what there is is a lot of piecework uh, stitching these things together. And uh, stripes, of course, very flattering to a fellow's legs um, uh, if they're vertical or even horizontal. Yeah. People sometimes like horizontal stripes, but I think these may be vertical. Uh, yeah, to make them look taller. Recall of, of period art. And, wings, um, wings behind, ready to fly. I mean, he's he's positively Dumbo, isn't it? Um... Well, well, the wings are on the gown that he's wearing, mm -hmm. um, and the reason you need a large, expensive codpiece on your expensive hose is that um, gowns are shorter than they were. Like the last generation, uh, people of high status uh, wear wear long gowns. Mm -hmm. um, People of the last generation, their everyday gowns were like to the knee, maybe just above if you were saucy. Um, <laughs> now the it's mid thigh. Now, now gowns, uh, the hem of your gown, if you're a man, is now above your crotch. So you need a codpiece uh, because uh, because they still, I think, split hose rather than joined hose. Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking bollocks. We do have joined hose. Literally talking bollocks. We do have joined hose. Um, <laughs> But but the uh, in tailoring the uh, art of the crotch is not so far advanced, and so you need a codpiece uh, as we would use a fly nowadays, uh, mm -hmm. as flies to wanton boys. Shit, no, uh, forget I said anything. Yeah, um, the, <laughs> no there's, comment. There's a, there's a lot in um, in nature uh, which I think you'd quite like uh, the the descriptors there because there's a lot more detail actually about yeah. the 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 way they're talking about. It. So they've got pieces that are going to be laced together, but the gap between the lacing is is two hands. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's it, the, there's all sorts of descriptors that are, are really, and we haven't got to the point where he comes on stage yet wearing this costume. We are we are poised with anticipation for this to happen tomorrow. Um, or yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. So the yeah. gown is short, but it is full. It it uses a lot of fabric, and the fabric is pleated to give it shape. But mm -hmm. fullness is one way that you indicate social status and the fact that you can afford expensive clothes. Mm -hmm. He's got some like designer shit going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Gucci of the era can. Yeah, and and then we're getting to the the uh, another th the crossover with this afternoon as well, actually, with uh, which is the the potential uh, frequention of places of uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, good uh, repute. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> boardy houses of various descriptors. Um, so yes, the question of um, I, I, yes the uh, the leech slash lech craft. I quite like the idea. You know, talking about this is an art. I uh, do this like is a science. Leech craft. Um, uh, I, 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 it's it's, all, I, it's going with leech to connect with, say, doc. Uh, you know, physician. Doctors. Um, yeah. You know, and it, they, it, they're very good at what they do. They ease many a man. Yeah, that make, make mm -hmm. you know that's a, it, it should be on the NHS is sort of is a, is a sort of uh, argument there. Um, so I yeah, if there's that all this. Means they stick leeches on people while they're not looking. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't really? be. Well, you, you never know. You never know. I. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it, it's going into that that sort of thing about you know, boardiness leading into, uh, 
the maid of whom of their affections, as it were. Yeah. Which is a setup for where we will be next time. Um, when that that goes goes a little further. Uh, other thoughts. Um, I'm just well, wondering whether B was hiding in the audience. I'm just um, when when he, when he was called out, like going, "Is anyone in the room? Uh, can anyone in the room vouch for me?" And it's just B stands up and goes, "Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I can." You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. Yeah, I felt again. kind of Sorry. bad for um, Liza reading the whole thing about. Oh yeah, you know, um, for basically women are you know evil. It, you know, it's better if you have if you don't have a wife. And I'm like, well so much for the idea of like hey respect women well yeah but then the clowns seem to operate by a different principle than the serious characters as, as yeah, we so true. often find mm -hmm. and and you do you know a hundred years before this uh at the turn of the 14 at the turn of the 13th century chaucer was talking about the sorrow and woe that is in marriage and uh how um, you know, some dudes just aren't ready to commit. You know. And... Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. The thing is, we're not we're not looking at A and B as exemplars to follow as as, as examples. You know, we have we have these other characters. Um, I mean, it's a question actually of the other the 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 lover who uh, the wealthy lover, uh, as it were. Um, how ridiculous he's supposed to be because we didn't play him ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's his appeal to father about, you know, uh, if, if you could appeal on my behalf. But maybe he's supposed to be performed in a slightly more silly sense. Because, you know, the clothing that he's preparing <laughs> is uh, is absurd. So yes. um, maybe there's an element there. I, I have something to say about the very beginning of this section where mm. B... Uh, we were talking about where B enters. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know whether the stage direction, uh, when the first time A says, here's a gentleman that would trust me, um, I wonder if A is talking about B at all. I wonder if A isn't singling someone out of the audience. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends where we get or how authentic the stage direction of points to B is before B comes forward. Um, yeah, I, it looks to me like it is authentic from the printing. I mean, whether that is is enough to say, um, you know, it doesn't get printed for twenty years. Um, you know, it's a, a, a span. Well, it doesn't get printed in England for twenty odd years. Uh, I think it actually gets a printing in, on the continent um, much sooner afterwards. Weirdly, I need to double check on that, so I'm not going to say that's a, that's a definite. Sure, um, but I I, I think it's. Um, no, it 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 appears um, as as a genuine thing in the text, at the very re uh, the very least. Um, so now, B, you are going to be wooing yourself in the next scene. <laughs> Yay! Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you know, t tomorrow is another day and another doubling. So um, yes. it's. Uh, uh, um. Oh, actually, no, maybe it's not. <laughs> Ooh, the B may no. It looks like the B yeah. may be a, a later editorial edition. Mm. Uh, I, don't ah, have, so, I don't have that as an authentic text, so, so we I, can pass that, that differently. Okay, that's good. I Avoid the, the place first... is, is genuine, but uh, B is that is not. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the first yeah the first gentleman that A picks to be their surety is is not B, and the Might second person B, that A notices is is B. Yeah, because that makes it a bit of a nice audience participation, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, here is a gentleman pick on who the trusts me. Time yeah. honored wise. Yeah, this is someone who will trust me. He's going. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I yeah. don't yeah. really he's know. Cool. He's cool. Yeah. Uh, and Ga Gaius is like, yeah, he looks a bit scruffy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, as much also, good as he has, yay, and that is but a little per case. I mean, it's really good audience stick, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, and there, yeah, I, yeah. So comes forward. That's an entrance line, isn't it? B comes forward. You're absolutely right. So you're go you're going. Uh, anybody in the room can vouch for me? Anyone? 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll do. The person who just literally walked in now. Your cue has yeah. passed. Um, 
Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Amended. I, I like how their plot is now fo following the main plot, which is kind of like sort of, you know, they, they're both sort of in, well, in love, interested in whatever you want to call it, uh, in the same woman. And they're, they've ended up on opposite sides of this divide, basically. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it, it seems to be, it is a deliberate parody of, of the A plot, if we want to call mm -hmm. it the A plot, uh, which is confusing when you've got a plot involving A. Um, but yes. yeah, the, and, and that's the thing we get in a lot of later plays, actually, the deliberate parodying of the, of the A and the B plot mm -hmm. um, by a playwright who was quite interested in, um, uh, or various playwrights who, who, who I, I, I suspect had access even, you know, potent, potentially to these, these plays. Um, very difficult to say. Fulton St. Lucrece disappears uh, mm. after that printing. It does. I don't think it gets a reprinting in 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 the period. So it's it's tricky to say that there is any direct line. That you know, later playwrights might have read it, um, mm. but there's some good textual hints that that might be mm. so. So as we approach extra time, uh, final thoughts about this. Uh, First third of the play. Um, I, 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 I don't know whether we have any uh, any cat translators in to see uh, what the uh, the feline opinion of the text is so far. Uh, Liza, any final thoughts? Well, I I kind of I kind of love A and B. I I love, you know, um, Star Wars is nothing without Ewoks and and mm. you know. They're also sort of fulfilling the Han Solo role of when people take themselves too seriously, they're, they're the ones that point it out. Um, yeah. And I would love to know what troop this was written for and, and what the history was. Uh, a, whether A and B were people who were famous, maybe, or known in their own right uh, as, as funny people. Um, I don't know. I. I'm really liking this play so far. Mm. I, I mean, it, it is it is it that sort of tricky point where we do know that there were you know people did sponsor you know small companies uh, you know within households. Um, the relative scale um, of the texts speaks to me of of you know a special occasion rather than you know someone who might take this on tour. Um, you know, I don't think it's designed for that. Whether the players then also did other things, I mean, the thing is, they're within a household, so they're probably doing several other jobs. You know, they probably have another place in the household as well. Um, so it's, but there are lots of questions of which I don't know the answer to yet. Um, it's, it's really interesting, but yeah, it's great fun. Mm -hmm. Eric, final thoughts? Well, I feel like, I mean, because we did nature earlier today, and I feel like this one is a lot less philosophical. It's like, yeah, this is just all plot, whereas the other one is like, oh, yes, nature and mankind, and uh, oh, yes, reason has to stay away from, you know, um, sen uh, sensuality and stuff and so on. Um, but yeah, this one seems like way more entertaining from the beginning. Yes, I, I mean, I like the other one as well, but yeah, sort of in a different way. Yeah, you haven't seen the second half yet. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it uh, it um, gets a bit full on, um, though it still manages to be entertaining. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Absolutely right. This is this is a nice secular um, comedy. Uh, you know, uh, it's the it's not the earliest secular dramatic thing or semi-dramatic thing we've got, but it's certainly the most substantial secular drama that we've got. Um, and as a double act with nature, uh, you've got this, which is playing around with ideas, is going to be asking questions about nobility and, you know, uh, uh, which we'll get to in the second half. Uh, whereas nature is, is a, you know, your pucker morality play. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's 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 straight out of the playbook of every other morality play. That's a proper morality play as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's really engaging with, uh, you know, how to live your life and how not to end up in hell in a pre yeah. Reformation way. Uh, it doesn't get caught up in the untidiness of the later morality plays, later interludes plays, 
that are sort of doing both of these plays at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 as exemplars, these two plays are are really fascinating. They're really well done. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, they're, 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 I, I'm really enjoying them so far. I'd argue that this one also has like a sort of uh, Foldens and Lucrece has like a play within a play because it starts off with A and B and then you've got like they inject themselves into Foldens and Lu Lucrece's story. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know if that's that could be read that way, but maybe. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, it's yeah. I'm just gonna say yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna say yeah i'm just gonna just, just yeah. stop on that point um yeah any anything else before we close no everyone everyone's uh everyone's uh managed uh well well w just one brief thought which is that this is a thing that that plays of this period that survive in my experience of having of having read them it's fun. There is more fun happening on stage than I think I've ever <laughs> seen in in a, in a in a play of of this time. Yeah, uh, there the, the, there is there is a lot to delight. Um, and and I I I think that the meta thing uh, is is really important that uh, Eric was saying earlier. You know, this play within a play. Um, I got there in the end. Um, is is you know it's it, it shows to the playfulness. Um, you know, and it it, it 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 just it's got everything. It's got everything, hasn't it? It's got comedy. It's got drama or bit Mind. of drama. It's got ideas. It's got <laughs> meta theatre. Um, you know, when did the play start? Ooh. Um, when will it end? Uh, we've all been in Fulgence and Lucrece all along. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly been a long day. I think I need to wind up now. Uh, all that remains yeah. is to thank all our fabulous re uh, readers today, Liza and Eric, uh, for uh, their assistance and farewell.